Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back. We are still here, of course, in the morning, and this is our third interview for today. Third or fourth, we're just moving along at this point. The recruiters and candidates, the recruiters were already here since yesterday. The candidates are strolling in, um, and as they are, we're still interviewing some schools, whether it's by school or by complete district. Um, and we have Tony here with us today, and she'll be talking about her district, and we can't wait to hear some more. So I, I don't know if I like the temperature of where she was talking about, but we're going to say that to everyone. No, I like other weathers. But talk to us, Tony. <laughs> talk to us. I'm here for you. How are you today? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. I'm doing good. So just let the listeners know who you are and where you're calling from. Uh, where I'm calling from. <laughs> I'm calling from Alaska. So my name is Tony McFadden. I'm the Alaska Teachers and Personnel Manager. We are a state office, so we work with all 53 school districts in the state of Alaska. We host the online application system and online job bank that's mm -hmm. statewide. So candidates just need to go to alaskateacher.org, upload their online application, and they have access to all 53 school districts' jobs. Wow. Okay. Uh, where would you say is the number one school in Alaska that you would just mention? So, you know, I don't think I don't think in those terms. Mm. We have 53 school districts. All of them are very interesting and unique. So what I tell candidates all the time is think about what it is that you want as a person in a school and in a general community. And you can find that in Alaska. Mm -hmm. So if you are looking for a large community that has multiple elementary schools and multiple high schools, right. Anchorage, Alaska might be the place for you. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for um, a medium-sized community that, again, has multiple elementaries, multiple middle schools, multiple high schools, mm -hmm. Fairbanks, Alaska, or Juneau, Alaska might be for okay. you. But if you're looking for a one-room schoolhouse experience, mm -hmm. we have that in oh, Alaska. Wow. You could go to Pelican, Alaska and be the one teacher for a K-12 school. So, and then we have everything in between. Mm -hmm. So think about what it is that you want in a school, in a com in a general community, and we can help you find that in Alaska. Wow. That's very interesting. Uh, a very wide, broad um, array of school systems here. So let's talk about how exactly do you see all these schools? How do they include, how do they form this inclusive environment, would you say? Um, in our rural communities, 98%, I'm making that number up, but about 98% of the student population is going to be the indigenous people in that area. Mm. So if you are teaching in um, a small community, your community is going to be a native Alaska group mm -hmm. that is indigenous to that area. And, and there are seven major groups in Alaska with 27, I think, um, different subsets. So mm -hmm. it's, it really is a diverse uh, cultural experience. We have many teachers that come and they will teach in a community for three years or so, and then they'll move to another community because they want to experience the differences in the cultural, they in but they stay in Alaska. Wow. Yes, we have those people that come to Alaska for one year because they want their Alaska experience, mm -hmm. and 30 years later, they're still wow. there, wow. and they're loving it. I've never been to Alaska, but I'm not joking around the weather, you know, <laughs> but is it always cold in no. every section that you speak of? No. Now, think of this. The state of Alaska is so big that if you cut it in half, we would be the first and second largest states, and... Texas would be a distant third. Oh, wow. So that's how big we are. If you put the state of Alaska on top of the lower 48 contiguous United States states, mm -hmm. we would reach from Canada to Florida and from the East Coast to the West Coast when you include the Aleutian Islands. So it's a huge area. Now, if you think of the climate differences in the United States from Montana to Florida, okay. mm -hmm. there's almost, not quite, but almost that kind of temperature difference in Alaska. And depending on where you are, of course, it's going to determine your climate. So if you're in Southeast Alaska, I like to tell people it's like a cooler Seattle. There's a lot of rain. The summers are sunny, but it's right on the ocean. So it's kind of cool summers, a little bit warmer winters. And yes. um, I live in Fairbanks, which is in the interior in the center of the state. And we boast the coldest temperatures in the state and the warmest temperatures in the mm -hmm. state. So 
two weeks ago, it was 52 degrees below zero in Fairbanks. Um, but this summer, it will get to it will get to 85 above. So we have beautiful summers in Fairbanks and we do have cold winters. So again, depending on where you are, the further north you go, of course, the cooler the summers, um, and then the ocean kind of mitigates some of those temperatures. So Anchorage is, you know, cooler than uh, Fairbanks in the summer, but also a little bit warmer than Fairbanks in the, in the winter, I mean. Thank you, thank you for that. Let's go back to the staff. Mm -hmm. teachers. I guess one question I wanted to ask is not a question, but maybe a, a strategy or an example that sticks out to you. I guess one thing I've been asking everyone is, you know, when they enter a school, what's the feeling, you know? And um, the last person said something about the architecture and that hit because if that thing is designed to make you feel good, as soon as you enter the school, <laughs> if it was designed correctly, you're going to feel good. So other schools may be the humans that, are, as soon as you get there, the hub is there to receive. Oh yeah, he said his architecture was in a formula. Oh, that's so, so that's right. <laughs> so you could feel that. So do you have any examples that you could share that shows that um, for the the staff? Um, there's a couple things. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, uh, the state of Alaska provides mentors for all of our first and second year mm -hmm. to the profession teachers. And um, the Alaska State Mentor Project is a statewide project. And so all of those first and second year teachers have a very experienced teacher in their corner from the get-go. So they are with them for two years to help them not only navigate the profession of teaching, which is a demanding profession, but also helping them figure out the community that they're in. Right. So these mentors, if you are in rural Alaska, this is a mentor that taught in rural Alaska. If you are in urban Alaska, it is a mentor that taught in urban Alaska. So you've already got somebody there helping you. Also, in our rural communities, we um, teachers teachers often live together. Rural communities provide teacher housing, so teachers live together. They're kind of their support network for each other. So you've got this community of support in people who are in the same profession as you. Mm -hmm. And our general community are welcoming our teachers because they want a good education for their children. Especially if it's a teacher who comes with the mindset of, I want to learn about you and your culture. Um, communities embrace them. And teachers and the school is, the school is really the center of activities and organizations for many of our small communities. Basketball is a big thing. Mm -hmm. um, native art and crafts are, mm -hmm. are very popular. And if you are wanting to go in and learn that, you will be embraced and taught some things that you can't learn anywhere else in the world. Mm -hmm. The other thing we have started is a mentor for a year for new to the, new to the state. So if you're coming from a different state or coming from a different country, you will get a mentor for a year to help you navigate the differences of Alaska. So you know we really want to support our teachers. We really want them to be happy and successful because a happy teacher mm -hmm. makes for happy students. That's what everybody been saying. <laughs> better teaning students. So yeah, happy we're all wife, that. Exactly. Something. That's exactly right. Yes. And one important question I've been I've been asking, especially I guess in this day and age, we label ourselves, and I am sitting here as a millennial, and we have a Gen Alpha and Beta just come in, you know. Oh, so oh, yeah, right. Like, where are we going with this? Um, but I wanted to ask that because AI was just well, the form of AI that we all use now just came out about a a year and two months ago, and I guess I wanted to, and that's just AI, you know. There's been other things well before that, and we don't know what's in front of us, you know? So I just want to know what type of environment um, are you guys fostering over there for technology? Technology is really important in Alaska, especially when you consider only about, not even a third of our state is connected by a road system. So that means more than two thirds of our state is not connected by a road system. So if you are in rural Alaska off the road system, you can't come and go. Um, on the weekend, you can't drive to you know the, the next 
neighborhood or the next city because there aren't roads. Um, and flying is kind of cost prohibitive to do often. So technology is really important, not only for our students learning about the world, their state, our country, it's, it's important as far as that relationship piece. It's important for our teachers to keep contact with home through Zoom, through Skype. It's important for our students to learn about other places and actually see what other places look like because it can be very different than the community that they live in. And to fully understand something, you really do have to see it and experience it that way. And technology is a wonderful thing because we can, you know, through a screen, at least help them experience it and see the differences. And our state is working very hard to increase um, bandwidth for our schools and our communities and making sure that everybody is connected. And that is a state priority. And our legislature is working hard on that. Oh, that's very nice. I guess another question I wanted to ask um, had to do with the teachers again. Um, and I guess I'm going to go with two folks. So let's say, because you say it's, it's over 50 schools. So there's a- It's factor. actually over 53 school districts. Over 53 school and districts. And so there are multiple schools in most of our districts. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's about to choose from. Yes. So let's say for a family, you mm -hmm. know, uh, a husband, a wife, and two kids, uh, where would you recommend them to go? And then if it was a single individual who has wants a social life, you know, where would they go? If it's a single person that wants a social life, they want restaurants to go to, they want a nightclub or something mm -hmm. like that, then they really need to stick to an urban area. Anchorage, Fairbanks, Juneau, Matsu Valley, mm -hmm. those would be, um, and then anything on the road system. So even small communities on the road system. Um, so Denali Borough or Nenama or Delta Greeley, because while there might not be that in their community, they can drive to it. Mm -hmm. Um, if you are an adventurous single and, you know, you want to experience a new culture and see beautiful country, then any rural Alaska, I mean, any community in Alaska is going to provide that. Okay. You can live in Anchorage and drive 10 minutes and be in the wilderness. Um, I live in Fairbanks. We drive 45 minutes. We're in the White Mountains. We love camping. We're camping every weekend. We're the only people that we see, you know, our, we have big dogs, our big dogs can, that can roam freely. Um, it's a wonderful experience because I have the town, I have, you know, the city of Fairbanks, mm -hmm. but yet we drive a short distance and we are surrounded by nothing but nature. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you're a family, it's the same thing. It just depends. Okay. You know, again, think about what it is that you want. If you need a Starbucks every morning on your way to work, then Buckland, Alaska might not be for you, right? But if you want to experience something you will never experience anywhere else in the world, then rural Alaska is is amazing. Mm -hmm. I think, I think you, you touched me. You caught me. I might. I need to go to Alaska. Just you need to come to Alaska. <laughs> it's the best place in the world. It's like, sometimes, you know, I don't know why, but Alaska is like, it's not really on the list. You, you know, change, top of the list. You need to change your list. I need to change my list. You I'm, I'm going to start doing that. <laughs> no, Tony, thank you so much. As we wind down here, I have, the listeners wanted to know a little bit more information about the mission of schools, of the schools, or the, uh, the schools in the districts. Where, where exactly can they go? So, they go to alaskateacher.org. We are a free resource for candidates looking to work in Alaska. Um, we have all kinds of information about our school districts. We have links to teacher blogs so they can see some of our schools and our communities and read about what teachers do in those communities. We have the job bank and application system. Um, so, you know, we're just the one-stop shop for people who are interested in working in Alaska schools. Very good. And for those that will may apply in the future, um, if they are here today, might get a chance. Can you please share some advice to our listeners to get them to the success? Just, um, just really think about knowing yourself and knowing what it is that you want and doing your homework. I say research, 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 because our communities in Alaska can be very different. Mm -hmm. And we don't want you to be caught off guard and we don't want you to be unhappy. Right. Because again, 
A happy teacher gives us happy students who achieve better. So do your research, take right. some time, go to our website, look around, go to that community's website, look around, go to that school district's website, look around, do your research before you commit to one of our communities. Thank you so much, Don. Uh -huh. Thank so much. Thanks for having me this morning. Happy teacher, happy students, and happy students. So, mm -hmm. so <laughs> thanks again, Tony. And to our listeners, we're still here. So thank you so much for listening. We are taking another 15 break and then we'll be right back with our next uh, interview. So thank you for being with us, educators. All right, we'll be back. Bye-bye.